imagine a world without sight, a world without sound? What challenges might you face? Would you face them down with confidence or cower in fear? How would you handle them? Helen Keller faced both, but she didn't let that stop her. Put yourself in her shoes for just a moment. Close your eyes. Now cover your ears. This was the world through the lens of Helen Keller, who lost her sight and hearing when she was only 19 months old. However, despite these challenges, this woman has left a mark on the world that has impacted generations. Helen Adams Keller was an American author, disability rights advocate, political activist, and lecturer. She was also known as an educator. She was born on June 27, 1880 in Alabama. Throughout her life, she received the Presidential Medal of Freedom for her work. Her life represents an extraordinary accomplishment in education of people with disabilities, especially for her time. At just 19 months old, Helen contracted an illness that is thought to possibly be scarlet fever or meningitis, and this illness took away her ability to see and hear. She became quite an unruly child, as you could imagine, and was known as somewhat of a terror. This was strongly due to the fact that her parents allowed her to do anything she desired without correction. Although, despite these challenges, she had formed a communication system with one of their maids and had over 30 signals that they used to communicate with one another. Pretty amazing, right? At age six, her parents took her to be examined by Alexander Graham Bell. Then, Ann Sullivan from the Perkins Institution for the Blind in Boston entered the scene. This woman became a very influential figure in Helen Keller's life. She ultimately helped her learn how to communicate. The two remained together through their lifetimes until Sullivan passed away with Helen at her side in October of 1936. Ann Sullivan truly opened the world to Helen Keller. Within months of working together, Helen's disposition had improved significantly and she had learned to feel objects and associate them with words, spelled out with sign language in her palm. In a dramatic struggle, Helen learned and first connected words to objects through the word water. They had been trying for a very long time as um, Sullivan would take Helen's hand and place it under the water and then spell water in her hand and Helen just wasn't getting it. And then finally she connected it. And by the end of the night, she had learned over 30 words by connecting the objects to the words and thus her world opened. She also learned how to read in Braille. She attended the Perkins Institution for Schooling. Then under Sarah Fuller at the Horace Mann School for the Deaf, she slowly learned how to speak. Imagine the excitement you'd feel after being able to communicate with others after years of feeling trapped within yourself. At age 14, she enrolled in the Wright Humanison School for the Deaf in New York City. And at age 16, she entered the Cambridge School for Young Ladies in Massachusetts. She won admissions to Radcliffe College in 1900 and graduated cum laude in 1904. Having developed skills never approached by any other person with disabilities, Helen began to write of blindness, which was seen as a very taboo topic in those days. She went on to write several books in her lifetime, including The Story of Her Life, Optimism, The World I Live In, Light in My Darkness, My Religion, Helen Keller's Journal, and The Open Door. In 1913, she began lecturing with the aid of an interpreter, primarily on behalf of the American Foundation for the Blind, for which she later established an endowment fund and her lecture tours took her several times around the world, making a huge difference in the lives of others. Her efforts to improve the treatment of the blind and deaf were influential in removing the disabled from asylums. She also promoted the organization of commissions for the blind in 30 states by 1937. She was quite 
the activist, quite the trailblazer, and much ahead of her time. Helen Keller lived a long life and passed away on June 1st, 1968 in Connecticut. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. This was said by Helen Keller and her life very much demonstrated this quote. She was a woman who changed the world and touched the hearts of many through her life and legacy. Thank you.